would like to invite uh, with us today Maria Palha from Be Human and Fernando Nobre from MII. Maria Palha is a humanitarian crisis psycho psychotherapist, author and founder of Be Human Association. She traveled the world with Doctors Without Borders, learning how to implement mental health programs in humanitarian contexts and collecting inspired stories from all over the world that result in the emotional first aid box book. She will bring to the Planeteers World Gathering a global vision on mental health and how to promote well-being as a priority in several different contexts. And with us today as well, Fernando Nobre is the president and founder for 35 years of MII, International Medical Associ Assistance Foundation. He has developed projects in more than 70 different countries and has the first Portuguese and was the first Portuguese to win European Association of Urologists Award for Portugal. Fernando says that medicine is one of the most beautiful professions in the world if we would ha know how to integrate technical scientific knowledge with humanitarian component. Today, they will present their visions on how health and well-being are also related to sustainability. Thank you very much. And we are going to start with Maria. Uh, I need my... Um, I think that they will bring, sorry for that. Okay. Uh, can you please go back forward one slide, production? Previous slide, please. Okay. So, first of all, good morning. My name is Maria Palha. I'm a Portuguese clinical psychologist, and for the last 14 years I have been working with mental health in the humanitarian sector. Uh, I have been developing many mental health projects, but um, I just got to one conclusion recently. Regardless of the crisis, it's the access to emotional information that allows us to survive. But I think I don't need to take you to some HIV project or to, some, to Syria or Libya, Ukraine, in the front line where I worked, uh, for you to understand the, the importance of this work. I would rather ask you, for instance, how many of you felt overwhelmed during this pandemic uh, moment? Can you please raise your hands? And uh, how many of you felt disconnected from others or, or life at a certain point during this uh, pandemic? Okay. We can even go deeper. And uh, I can even ask you to imagine what do you think it would happen if we would stay stuck in that feeling for 10 years? Your way of living, uh, your interactions with others, scary, huh? So it seems that at this exact moment we have 970 million people struggling with this feeling. Mental illness its the main cause of disability in the world because of course we will, it in, impacts the way we interact with others, the way we connect to our family work, and work and this is one of the main blocks of GDP. Myself, I was born and raised in Portugal. And uh, in fact, my country, the references that I have, it's, uh, it has one of the highest mental illness rates in Europe. I'm not sure if it was because of my upbringing story or because of these numbers, or even the fact that I was getting tired of always using and intervening um, emotional band-aids in this crisis. But in fact, I was I, I decided to find new solutions. I, I discovered that uh, we are facing a global pro problem, so we need global solutions. And that's why I chose um, experts all, all over the world to, um, to ask them, what can we do to be more human and to prevent these suffering cycles? 
My experts, they were children between 5 and 12 years old, and they were all over the world. So during three years, I interviewed these experts and their families, looking for a global solution. This, um, this research took me to identify three main areas that need to be reorganized. First of all, when we talk about emotional knowledge. In Sierra Leone, there was one woman, one woman, when I asked her, do you know what emotions are? She just voiced out something that I was um, connecting with in other places. She told me, I don't know what emotions are, but maybe it's what I felt in my chest before entering the teenage ritual, which includes, of course, in Sierra Leone, female genital mutilation. But she told me, you know, Maria, I could not run. This is Africa. So I just stayed quiet. In Portugal, children also told me that I think uh, adults, they don't know much about emotions. Because if they did, they would dream more. And in fact, Portugal is high, has the highest rates of Ill mental illness. And we can find tons of reasons to disconnect ourselves from, emo from emotions. But if, if we do this, we will also disconnect ourselves from our main needs. And this can even compromise, compromise the way we survive. And maybe this is the reason behind the fact that every each 40 seconds we have a new death for suicide. What is happening at the end? The second uh, big area that was a bit problematic in the eyes of these experts, it was the connection with others. In Colombia, many children, they told me, I don't know, but I think adults, we should all look to our similarities and not to our differences. This is the way we can keep peace. And in Bhutan, they always remind me, why don't you choose to be elected the best friend, the best companion of the world each day? And in fact, at a certain point, we forget to do this. And at the present moment, we face the highest number of displaced people in the world. If we don't improve our compassion, we won't be able to receive these people. If without empathy, we won't be able to smooth our relationships. And among all, without collaboration, it's impossible to bring the sense of belonging that a community has. Um, this takes, took us to the third main area that was problematic for children, nature. So, the, the question that I was, uh, there was a big question that I was doing, which was, if you would be the president of the world, what would be the first law that you would create? And these children, it didn't matter the country, they, all, they would always begin with, of course, I would oblige all the adults to take care of nature. And at a certain point, they told me, I hate when adults destroy nature. Of course, they are closer to our main source, which is nature. So children are m much aware of this. But in fact, there is an existential dimension that needs to be taken care of. And this existential dimension makes it's part of our human being. And without this, we lose our sense of uh, meaning of life, the sense of belonging, and even worse, we, we, don't, uh, we are not able to connect with something bigger, which is spirituality. And for this reason, um, these children improved and they advocate for this connection with nature. At a certain point, we see that half of the world has less contact with nature than prisoners. How can we connect and protect something and even engage with something that we don't know, that we don't have contact with? So we identified the main problems. And now I will share with you some solutions. A little of Human Eyes, it's the trailer of the documentary that we did. And I will share with you the trailer. We live in a historical moment that is rapidly changing. Are Western societies in decline? Are we replacing the human touch with the iPad touch? Are emotions no longer perceived as an intelligent and useful response? Yeah, 
tocar a taller, ¿no? Hoy en día, enseñar a la gente. Y clean the environment. Amar unos a otros. Amar más. To be the humanity we desire for our children means we care and are able to fulfill our universal responsibility, being the adult we needed when we were children. Can we think together? It seems one year ago these children voiced out and they also proposed something that we are here doing today, to get together, to think in a global, uh, to have a global uh, thinking and to find a global solution. Because I was available and also these children, we were able to reach their wisdom. And we identified three dimensions that need to work together if we want to change the world. When we talk about emotional well-being, we need to combine emotional self-care. This only by taking care of myself, I will be able to have healthy connections with others and then to have meaningful interactions with the planet. And this is the final result of this work. We just created an emotional toolkit that combines a series of habits, activities, and techniques that promote, that promote the three main areas that make us human and that allow, will allow us to change the world. Thank you. Um, Fernando, uh, can we hear also from you? Thank you very much. Well, uh, I will speak very quickly. First of all, I thank the organization to invite me. Secondly, we are here to speak about health and well-being are crucial for sustainability. Who, I am, who am I? I am a medical doctor since 43 years now. I'm working as a humanitarian doctor since 42 years now. And uh, so I am a medical doctor and a specialist in uh, general surgery and urology and humanitarian medicine. Um, what else is? Else is, is a definition, definition by the World Health Organization, is a state of well-being on physical, psychological, social methods, but I will add ambiental, environmental, and cultural methods. To the end of this year in the world, we will have more 270 to 300 more poor people. Poor people, that means bad health. 65% of the illness in the children in the world is associated, direct associated, with malnutrition or denutrition. So when you speak, we'll have, with this pandemic consequences, 270 to 300 more, poor million more people. That means we will have 300 million more people with hunger. Hunger, that means no good health. I will not speak about psychological effects. My dear friends have spoken about that. And I don't speak about social effects, terrific social effects. I will speak only about medicine. This is my profession, no? And um, that's why I'm teacher in the medical school of the university in Lisbon. Uh, so, if you can forward, please, with the presentation. Uh, if you can go ahead. No? We have sent the presentation, but if it comes to the screen, I don't know what is happening. Ah, I have to move here? Yeah, yes. Ah, so we are here to speak about the, the, the three sustained development goal who will must be achieved until 2030. We know now that it will be impossible. This third sustained uh, development goal has to reduce global maternity and maternal mortality, newborns and children, AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, non-communicable disease, and uh, other things, 
road traffic accidents, sexual and reproductive health, and universal health coverage, and the matter of chemicals and pollution. We know that uh, with the impact of this pandemic in the world, even in our countries in Europe, all these matters uh, will be impossible to be achieved. So, as the time is very short, let me just explain how AMI is contributing for these development goals, sustained development goals. And for decades now, I used to say that two things are really important for sustained development is health and education. Without health and education, it's impossible to have a sustained population. So, in a very particular way, very quickly, AMI, I found it almost 36, 36 years ago, is acting, for example, in Uganda, in this matter, if a project told to me uh, to promotion the good sexual and the reproductive health between the refugees in, in Uganda, because the most of these young girls are abused and violated. So we have a medical team there working on this matter. Second example, in Guinea-Bissau, in Kina, is one province of Guinea-Bissau. We have another project in another province. We are working with 150 health workers to increase in the coverage of proximity health care service to pregnant women and under five years old children. As I have said, the death of the children under five years in 65% of the cases, malnutrition or denutrition are correlated, are associated. So your concern is about that. Another example in Madagascar, I will, I will then explain you to India, to Bangladesh, and other countries in the world. But in Madagascar, so we are working on human resources for health in pediatrics in this hospital. So acting like that, AMI is working to sustain the development. I repeat, without good education, without health, it is impossible to have a sustained development. It's crucial. So, just to have uh, an example, AMI, since I founded her in '84, and before I was a uh, member of the board of Doctors to be border, Borders in France and Belgium, uh, we have a map here, very quickly. We have all the countries we have developed projects. Until now, 83 different countries over the world, and then now we are, we are developing uh, uh, projects in 25 countries on the health issues. Doing that, I am sure that AMI is contributing for the sustained global uh, project development. But let me see and finish now. I am very, very concerned and very scary what is happening in the world now with this pandemic, because the consequences in the poor countries are much, much, much bigger than in our countries. And so the proposals who are de uh, definitely to be achieved in 2030, uh, I'm sure it will be impossible to achieve these goals. And it is a situation now. We have to return to the principal matters, and the principal matters is human beings. Thank you. Thank you very much.